The saying, nothing is impossible, best describes our next conqueror, Helen Keller. Helen Keller was a world-renowned author and activist. At 19 months old, Helen caught a type of fever that affected the brain, causing her to become both blind and deaf. Some doctors believed that it could have been meningitis. Helen Keller was born on June 27, 1880, in Tuscumbia, Alabama, to parents Arthur Henley Keller and Catherine Everett Keller. Helen's father spent many years as an editor of the Tuscumbia North Alabamian and also served as a captain in the Confederate Army. The family lived on a homestead called Ivy Green, which was built by Helen's paternal grandfather decades earlier. When she was only eight, her mother died, and then two years later, her father deserted her and her siblings. At age six, Helen was put under the care of a young tutor called Anne Sullivan Macy, a visually impaired alumna from the Perkins Institution for the Blind in Boston, who eventually taught her to read the braille, do lip reading, and recognize objects by feeling them. Anne remained a lifelong friend and partner to Keller until her death. On March 5, 1887, Anne arrived at Keller's house and immediately began teaching her to communicate by spelling words into her hand. She first spelled the word D-O-L-L -L for the doll she had given Keller as a gift. Anne struggled with classes at first because she didn't understand that each object was identified by a word. She became so frustrated that she broke a mug one time when her tutor was trying to get her to spell the word mug. Eventually, within months of Sullivan's arrival, Helen had begun to, to feel items and correlate them with words spelled out by finger signals on her palm to read sentences by touching raised words on cardboard and to create her phrases by arranging words in a frame. This breakthrough is said to have come at a water pump when she recognized water. This breakthrough led to remarkable successes as she furthered her education at various schools, mastering the art of braille and manual lip reading. She enrolled at Radcliffe College in 1900, took the same exams as all other students, and graduated with distinction in 1904, making her the first deaf-blind person to earn a Bachelor of Arts degree. She also wrote a best-selling autobiography along the way. Helen Keller went on to become an author and activist, often reading about blindness and raising awareness about people living with disabilities. She was also passionate about other causes like the labor movement, women's rights and challenges, and childhood disabilities. She wrote in an article in 1907 that many cases of childhood blindness could be avoided by simply washing the eyes of every newborn baby with a disinfectant solution. Through her advocacy, this public health measure was quickly and generally widely adopted. Helen Keller became a member of the Socialist Party in 1909 and actively campaigned and wrote in support of the working class from 1909 to 1921. She also gave speeches about women's right to vote, and in 1912, she joined the IWW Industrial Workers of the World. She began lecturing with the assistance of an interpreter in 1913, primarily for the American Foundation for the Blind, and her lectures took her all over the world. In 1920, Keller helped to found the American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU. By this time, she traveled to over 40 countries. At age of 22, she published her autobiography, The Story of My Life, 1903, with the assistance of Sullivan and her husband. It describes her life up to the age of 21, written when she was in college. Some of her other works include Optimism, written in 1903, The World I Live in 1908, Light in My Darkness, and My Religion in 1927, and also her journal in 1938, titled Helen Keller's Journal. In 1962, an American biopic about the life of Helen Keller and her teacher Anne Sullivan was released. The two actresses that played them, Anne Bancroft and Patty Duke, received the Academy Awards for Best Actress and Supporting Actress. The biopic was titled Miracle Worker, the right title for the conqueror, Helen Keller.